Welcome back to the Print 3D channel. We got some really cool filament from 3D Printworks and I want to share my unboxing and first impressions with you guys, so stick around. A huge thanks to the following people for supporting the channel. Hey everybody, welcome back and thank you for joining me here on the Print 3D channel. Recently, a representative from 3D Printworks reached out to the channel and wanted to know if we wanted to test out some of their filament. And of course I said yes. And while browsing around on their website, I noticed they have some sparkle filament or glitter filament. And I've always wanted to try this kind of filament out. So I asked them to send over a roll of their gray sparkle filament. And once they did, we did our unboxing and our first impression tests and we started printing. But before we go any further, a little disclaimer. We were not paid in any way for our unboxing, our review, or our opinions of this filament. The filament was sent to the channel for free for review. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get to the unboxing. So the packaging itself is basic, it's a basic package, it's a no frills package as I would call it, but it does have a window so you can see the color of the filament, and it is clearly labeled on the box what type of filament you've purchased, the size of the roll, and the color. So once we got the box uh, opened up, I did notice right away that inside the box was a little bit of a surprise, and I wasn't really prepared for this. There is a little bit of a card. It looks like a sticker, but it, it's, it has more of like a coaster feel. It's a little thick cardboard, and it's basically an advertisement for their Vanish filament, which is their new dissolvable filament that they're using. And once I get my dual extruder GMAX going, I'll probably use that. But there was also a sample of their purple, which I believe they call Passionate Purple. And this is an amazing color. I really love this purple. I'm definitely going to be ordering a full roll of this. And we'll definitely do a full testing on their standard PLA. So it's nice to see a little sample in the box stashed away. The plastic bag that the filament came in, since this came from overseas, it appeared that some of the vacuum seal had popped out of it. So there might be a small hole somewhere. But that's not a big deal. I'm not too worried about it because I did see a desiccate bag or a silica bag within the plastic bag. So I know that there's been some... You know, there's no moisture in the actual uh, plastic bag that the filament comes in. Once I got the filament out of the bag, I also noticed that it had come undone from the actual spool holder itself, which again isn't a problem as long as there's no tangles in there. So it took me a few minutes because I noticed that the filament is a little bit stiff to get it wrangled here so I could, I could finish doing the unboxing and, and show you guys all the different testing that we're going to do, including the clip test and the bend test, and of course we'll check the diameter. And of course, there's that little handy silica bag. Always good to have those in there to keep your filament dry. So I did notice that there are a couple of retainer holes along with the label. And there are some uh, uh, little view windows near the center of the spool too, so you can see how much filament you have left. And these holes are on both sides of the spool holder itself. Now, if you go to the website, you'll see that they also have refills available for the master spool project, which is really awesome. So I'll definitely be ordering some master spool refills once I get my master spool printed. And checking out the actual sparkle filament, you can see it's more of a medium sparkle or glitter to the filament. It's not an intense glitter. And I'm excited about that because I didn't want a very intense glitter. I wanted something a little bit more medium distribution. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unspool a little bit of filament from the roll. And then we're going to clip off a little bit. And we're going to do our bed test and our clip test and see how the consistency of the actual density of the filament is. So here we'll just clip off a little bit. We'll set that to the side and then I will try and wrangle the filament into the holes again so we can keep it from unspooling or un, un, uh, spooling from the actual spool holder itself. Like I said, I did notice it's a little bit brittle, a little bit stiff filament, but I haven't had any problems so far. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get a little section of it and let's do our standard bend test, which is always a good test to see how strong the filament is and if it's got a bit of a softness to it. And I noticed right away that it broke really easily. Now, it really wasn't a snap. It was more of just a bend and snap. So I did it a few times here just to make sure I didn't have a little bit dried out filament on the end. Because a lot of times the end of the spool will probably be at the end of the extrusion cycle and it might have some problems. But the clip test itself, it turned out nice. As you can hear, it's got a nice smooth clip to it. So I was on the fence. I wasn't sure if this was going to be an issue. But I've recently done some upgrades to the GMAX 1.5 XT+. 
installing a uh, sharper feeder, feeder gear to feed the filament in, and I do have my hard nozzle that I purchased from Matter Hackers. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clip off a little bit of filament and we're going to do a diameter test. So we'll go ahead and pull a little bit off the spool. And I like to pull out a couple of meters because I like to do more than the average. A lot of people only do two or three. I like to do between five and seven measurements of the filament itself just to make sure I get a good average. Because again, near the end of the roll, when they shut off the filament extruder, you might see some variations in your diameter of your filament. So we'll pull off a little bit here and we'll go ahead and clip it off and then I'll snap it back into the little retainer holes on the actual spool holder part itself. So once we get this wrangled into the spool holder part, we're going to go ahead and we'll zero out our micrometer and we'll go ahead and take our measurements. And like I said, I'll probably do five or six measurements on the actual filament because I like to take quite a few readings just in case, like I said, if it was at the end of the run of the actual filament uh, extrusion, there might be some issues there. But we'll go ahead and zero out our micrometer and let's go ahead and take a few, a few caliper readings. 1.75 for our first reading. That's always a good sign right off the bat. Our next reading gives us about 1.76. Good. Now the filament diameter tolerance is between 0 0.05, 0 0.05 millimeters. So this one was 1.68, so that's a little bit lower than the standard tolerance that's advertised. And we have a 1.76, not bad at all. And we'll take another measurement. We have 1.74. We'll keep measuring here. We have 1.70. Again, we're staying within the tolerance of 0.05 millimeters there. And a 1.75. So that's a pretty consistent filament diameter. So let's head over to the workbench and let's start some printing. Now that we have the filament out of the box, it's time to start printing. The first thing I noticed during the bend test is that the filament is a little bit brittle. But during the clip test, it did have a bit of a soft clip. But I'm not too concerned because recently I did some upgrades to my GMAX 1.5 XT Plus, including installing a new feeder gear, which has sharper teeth, and I installed the hardened nozzle that I purchased from Matter Hackers. So it's time to start printing. And the first thing we printed out was the CaliCat. And the print itself, it actually turned out really good. I'm super happy with the results. There's a nice even distribution of the glitter or sparkle fleck throughout the color of the filament. And the gray pigment is actually very consistent too. The print itself, it turned out really good. I'm super happy with the results. I knew it was time to start moving on to some other objects to print. So the next thing I printed out was the Baban model from Chaos Cortec. And this is one of my standard test models that I usually print out when I get new filament in. And this print turned out awesome. There are no problems whatsoever. We're running this filament over at 210 degrees on the hot end, and the suggested temperature range is 190 to 220. So I thought I'd shoot right down the middle, and it's the perfect temperature. Now there is a little bit of bump that happened during the uh, little wind-up part of the Babam model print, but it didn't affect the print quality whatsoever. And again, there's a nice even distribution of the little sparkle or glitter throughout the print. And the gray color is very consistent too. And the print itself, it turned out really, really good. And I'm super happy with the results. After that, we printed out my maker coin. And I like printing this out in different kinds of filament to really showcase the way the filament prints because there's a lot of retraction that happens in this print. And because this filament's a little bit brittle, I was a little concerned, but the print turned out perfect. There were no problems whatsoever. All the little retraction areas that I used, the gap fill feature in Simplify 3D, those turned out really good. And there's a nice even distribution of the glitter flake throughout the print itself. Even though there's not a lot of height to the model, there's a lot of areas of detail that'll have areas where the fleck will be able to print. And like I said, I'm super happy with the way this looks. The color is very consistent and the filament itself is printing really nice. So at this point, it's time to print out something that I normally print and that's the Lion HD. Now this model actually will give me a chance to show off how well the glitter is actually distributed throughout the filament strands because I use a 0.2 millimeter layer height on this. Now sometimes I'll print this a little bit bigger and it would really showcase that off, but I have something else over here that really showcased the way the fleck or glitter sparkle filament prints and that's that giant base behind me, but we'll get to that in a minute. The Lion HD print turned out awesome. There were no problems whatsoever. I didn't have any problems with retraction issues or anything else. And the print itself, it really looks good. There's a nice even distribution of the sparkle or the glitter throughout the print. And it really does add a lot to the prints. Now, the sparkle type of filament is usually reserved for stuff like this, like, you know, like uh, statues or things that you might want to put on display. So I didn't print out any kind of cosplay props or anything. I do have some things in mind. I think it would look cool on a sword blade or other things. But I really wanted to show it off in smaller things too with a lot of detail 
to really show the distribution of the sparkle. Because in my opinion, this is kind of a medium and I've seen some really high distributions of the glitter within the filament and the whole model is very glittery. And I think this is a really good medium level. The next thing we printed out was the My Little Pony model. And I love printing this one out because it's a really cool test print. Plus it's My Little Pony and I have sparkle filament, so you have to print one of these out. And the print itself actually turned out perfect. There were no problems whatsoever. Like I said, I do like this distribution of the sparkle throughout the print. It really does look good. There were no problems with the print whatsoever. I did run this out at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, and these are quick, easy prints, but it's a good way to really showcase how well the sparkle filament looks. After that, I printed out this cute little Easter bunny because it is Easter, and that print turned, this print actually turned out really good too. Even though it's a very small model, you can still see a lot of the glitter throughout the print. There were no problems whatsoever. Now we've worked our way pretty much into the roll and there should be a little bit more consistent and a little bit more even distribution of uh, sparkle. And it's been pretty consistent throughout the roll. So there's no changes throughout. And I've seen that happen sometimes with some glitter filaments that I've seen posts online where it actually starts to have more sparkle within deeper into the roll. And I don't know why that happens, but there's very consistent sparkle and glitter within these prints. And again, this print turned out really good. There were no problems whatsoever. The GMAX 1.5 XT Plus handled all the detail. And of course, I'll put the links for all the models that we used in our testing phase here down in the description so you guys can print these yourself. And after that, it was time to print out the big base. Now, I really wanted to print out something really big that would showcase how well the sparkle was distributed throughout the filament. And I have a GMAX 1.5 XT Plus, so why not GMAX size it? Now, this is the vase from Devon over at Make Anything 3D and it turned out perfect. There were no problems whatsoever. This is a really long print too. It actually took, I think about 12 hours in the GMAX, but I did speed this up to 60 millimeters per second. And I believe I used a 0.24 millimeter layer height, so I'd have nice beefy layers. And it really turned out great. There's a nice even distribution of the sparkle throughout. And I really love this model. It's one of my favorite things to print. After that, it was time to print out something with a ton of detail that was a little bit smaller and use some support material. So I picked out this gargoyle model that I saw over on Thingiverse, and it actually turned out really good. There were no problems whatsoever, and all the little detail, which were where the retraction settings would be, and the support material was actually based on the claws to hold up his little beak, because it's a bit of an air print, you will need support for that. And there is a version with wings, but I wanted to print the one without the wings, so I could really take a look at this back detail with the sparkle or glitter filament distri distribution throughout the print. And it really turned out good. I mean, it's a really cool detailed model. There's a lot to look at on here. And adding that little bit of sparkle to it, it actually turns out really cool. Of course, it's a gargoyle. Those, these are some of my favorite things to print. And I can see printing this thing really, really big on the G-Max in this same type of filament and making it some sort of lawn ornament. But I'm actually happy with the way this turned out. There were no problems whatsoever. The color is very consistent. We've used quite a lot of filament at this time. And we're rounding up our first impressions. When I got to this point, I realized there's one thing I hadn't printed, and that's the Benchy. So I went ahead and printed the Benchy out as my final piece to print for this first impressions of the Sparkle Filament from 3D Printworks, and it actually turned out really good. Now I've had the filament loaded up in the G-Max the whole time. I never changed filament. I didn't clean the extruder. I didn't do anything else. I just continuously print over about a week, every single night, a couple different objects if possible, or one big object like the big vase. And I wrapped it up with the little Benchy model and it actually turned out really good. There were no problems whatsoever. There was a little bit of stringing, but it handled the overhangs and all the issues that you normally see with initial prints when you're doing some first impression prints. On, on the prints, you would see like a little bit of curling happening or in these windows, it would be a little bit rough. But the G-Max handled it, no problem. And the print turned out perfect. I actually like the little Benchy boat with a little bit of sparkle in it. So it turned out really, really good. And that wrapped up all the prints that we did with the Sparkle Filament. So my overall first impressions of the 3D Printworks Gray Sparkle Filament is that this filament is super easy to print with. There's very consistent color. There's a consistent distribution of glitter or sparkle throughout the filament. All the prints turned out really good. The only change I had to make in Simplify 3D to my general PLA setting was up the temperature from 205 to 210. It's got a nice temperature range of 190 to 220 degrees. So depending on your hot end, you shouldn't have any trouble printing with this filament. Like I said, all the prints turned out really good. I'm super happy with the color, the way the glitter or sparkle looks throughout the prints, and I didn't have any problems whatsoever. And I highly recommend the 3D Printworks Gray Sparkle Filament. 
I'm sure that you could probably purchase either the red or the clear and have the same printing results. And I also want to let you guys know that this filament is now master spool compatible. Yes, that's right. If you go to 3dprintworks.com and check out their filament, under their listing, they also have replacement rolls or refill rolls that are perfectly compatible with the master spool project. It even includes the link so you can download the master spool and start printing. So that's very cool. That's a huge plus. I know a lot of people want to see that with filaments that are coming out. And I'm here to tell you guys that this filament is actually master spool compatible. So in my opinion, I highly recommend the 3D Printworks Gray Sparkle Filament. Now I haven't tried any of their other PLA, but I'm going to order some of their Passionate Purple because I was sent a sample of that and I really want to check that out and I'll do a separate review of that. But for now, I'm super happy with the Gray Sparkle and I highly recommend you guys check it out. Well that about wraps it up. I really want to thank 3D Printworks for sending over this roll of Gray Sparkle Filament for us to test and review on the channel. And a huge thumbs up to you guys for adapting to the Master Spool project. If you guys found this episode interesting and informative and you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out that Patreon link and all those affiliate links down in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll see you guys soon.